Next speaker, Ray Bouchard. Your book's right here, Ray. <laughs> Thank you. As you said, my name is Ray Bouchard. Uh, the, the book you mentioned is The Brown Turnpike, A True Story of Human Trafficking in America. As I mentioned earlier today, I also conduct extensive law enforcement trainings in the area of human trafficking in Connecticut, which is now required uh, by statute, which uh, was accomplished last year, a very good law, which I want to touch on now as I speak about my qualified support for specifically Bill uh, 7309. I want to bring your attention to some language that added to these bills or some suggestions would really strengthen them and move Connecticut forward in the area of prevention of human trafficking and especially the treatment of its victims. I also want to commend the committee. You've tackled some really tough subjects this, this session from sexual abuse uh, to imprisonment and, uh, and this. So thank you for your courage there. Anyway, um, first, I agree uh, entirely with the addition of the Commissioner of Education being added to the Trafficking in Persons Council. However, I know of no other agency, task force, commission in any other state across America focusing on human trafficking that does not have an adult victim of trafficking on its membership. Uh, this is an oversight that must be corrected. There's no better expert to, this, uh, to address this issue than the victims themselves, as you heard from Jen this morning. Second, while I strongly support the development of trafficking awareness curriculum for medical personnel and educators as required by 7309, I strongly urge you to make this training mandatory as it is for all law enforcement personnel in Connecticut. I've witnessed firsthand how much and uh, the impact this is having on law enforcement here in Connecticut and how the lights start to go off when they get this training. The same has to be done for other first contacts, uh, personnel and professionals, uh, educators, uh, doctors, and others. Third, 7309 improves trafficking awareness posting requirements, these signs we were heard about earlier, in several ways. The most important and obvious uh, of these are in the massage parlors, where prostitution human trafficking often, if not always, takes place. And there are 147 of them across even the smallest towns in Connecticut. Uh, while the bill requires the posting of these human trafficking awareness signs in other locations, I urge you to add schools, colleges, and universities in order to extend this life-saving information. Fourth. Section 4 of the bill increases penalties for commercial sexual abuse of a minor when there is sexual contact in, refer, uh, in return for a fee. Now, this is great language because it's really increasing that penalty when someone has sexual contact with a minor for a fee for money. This language, in my opinion, must include commercial sexual acts or performances as posting requirements, these signs we were heard about earlier, in several ways. The most important and obvious uh, of these are in the massage parlors, where prostitution human trafficking often, if not always, takes place. And there are 147 of them across even the smallest towns in Connecticut. Uh, while the bill requires the posting of these human trafficking awareness signs in other locations, I urge you to add schools, colleges, and universities in order to extend this life-saving information. Fourth, Section 4 of the bill increases penalties for commercial sexual abuse of a minor when there is sexual contact in, refer, uh, in return for a fee. Now, this is great language because it's really increasing that penalty when someone has sexual contact with a minor for a fee for money. This language, in my opinion, must include commercial sexual acts or performances by a minor, whether or not the person enticing them into or paying a fee for the sex act is in physical contact with them or even in the same physical location with the minor. The abuse suffered through the commercial sex exploitation of minors occurs in both real and virtual worlds. And what happens and what these youth are made to do on camera and not in the presence of the actual abuser is just as damaging and just as diabolical uh, and just as much of a commercial sex act as if they were in the same room. Fifth, Please summarize, Mr. Bouchard. I'm sorry, yes. Yeah, you have written testimony too? I do. I'm sorry, I didn't probably mention I have an extensive written testimony Good. that you have. Okay. Uh, the other area of the bill I mentioned this morning was um, the executive order, which is meant to uh, mirror the federal executive order to clean up the supply chains of Connecticut, uh, Connecticut state contracts. 
And finally, what Jen mentioned this morning is implementing a health plan to bring health, uh, mental health care and addiction recovery to the victims of human trafficking and prostitution. The two are intertwined. You cannot separate them. Addiction and the opioid epidemic and human trafficking run, they're not just hand in hand, they are tied together in separate Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any questions from the committee? Representative Porter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just listening to you uh, prompted a question. You know, you said for a fee. Um, have you ever thought about or ran across where it hasn't been for actually money, quote unquote, but drugs? Oh yeah, for for a fee or any goods or services, that would be that would be tremendous. So, in, for instance, there's a website called younow.com, and on younow.com, there are young girls, 12, 13, 14 years old, performing sex acts. And they have, some of them, tens of thousands of followers with hundreds of men watching at any given time. What will happen is these girls will set up, or have set up, a wish lists on Amazon.com. And, of course, those are anonymous. You go and buy a gift for someone and send it. You don't know who, to whom it's going or where it's going, so that keeps the anonymity. As soon as that gift shows up, she knows who sent it, and then she goes on and performs that act. The men are then able to rate them as to how well they did. And this can happen anywhere in the world. Uh, but, uh, so yes, for fee, for drugs, for, for any gifts in kind, I would, I would imagine. But the key is, it's not just the physical contact within the same room as conduct. There's really no difference between the virtual and physical world in yes. this area. Sounds very sick. Um, and I just wanted to, to go on record stating that I do agree that um, there should be a victim on the commission. Um, I've always said, and I will always say, that experience changes your perspective. And that perspective has the power to change people's viewpoints. So I just wanted to put that on record. I wholeheartedly support that. Nobody can tell you better than somebody that has been through it. So thank you. And thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Senator Winfield. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I was just wondering, uh, when the, the buzzer went off, you were at point number five. How many points did you actually have? I'm sorry, points? Yeah, oh. You, you, were, you were going through your <laughs> testimony. <laughs> Let's see. It would have uh, seven, really, but I think I only covered five, but the, my could full you, testimony. Could you not go deeply into it, but at least uh, just say what each point was? I think it's important. We can read your testimony, but sure. I've run into people in the grocery store that I wouldn't imagine watch CTN, and I think you were making some important points. So could you just lay out what the other two points were? Uh, let's see. The other two points. One is I did not go deeply uh, into um, the federal. Uh, so the, there's a federal executive order that this uh, that cleans up the uh, supply chain within federal contracts. This law calls for this legislation calls for the mirroring of that uh, federal executive order, so that contracts in, entered into by the state of Connecticut must, uh, the suppliers for those contracts, must show proof that there is no human trafficking in their supply chain of the goods they're selling to the state of Connecticut. So this is the non-sexual side of human trafficking. When we talk about human trafficking, there's so much emphasis put on commercial sexual exploitation. Um, almost all the laws here in Connecticut focus on that. Really, the, the, the large part of human trafficking uh, is forced and exploited labor. It's the part, as I said earlier, we're, in which we are all complicit because of labor and the cheap products we get uh, from all over the world in a global economy. We don't know where they're coming from. There's slave labor involved in much of it. And products we buy every day, uh, coffee, chocolate, uh, seafood, uh, cotton. Um, that's one of the areas. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, ah, well, there, I, I do have a bit, I, I know this is going against the grain and it's going to get me into trouble. But one of the points that I did not bring up is the um, uh, hourly rates for motels and hotels. That's a difficult one. The legislature has tried that before to uh, eradicate the ability for a hotel or motel to um, to rent their rooms by the hour. 
Uh, and I would not like to see that language put the bill in jeopardy. And the difficulty there is there are, one, it's difficult to tell a, a business what it can do in that fashion. Two, the, the language does not specify if there's no hourly late rate, what is the minimum amount of hours they can rent for their, their hotel room? Because when you go to a hotel room, it's usually check-in time is three and check-out is 10 or 11, so it's not a 24-hour period. So there's no definition there what they can do. But really, the fa fact of the matter is, there are many legitimate reasons people rent, um, want to go into a short-stay hotel. Uh, truckers who need a rest, um, business people who just need to clean up and get changed after a long trip to go to a meeting, uh, expectant mothers um, to, to, to uh, rest for a while. There's a lot of good reasons for that. So um, I understand the intent of this. I understand that. What people want to do is say many of these, some of these motels, especially along the Berlin Turnpike, you know, and there's 1,300 motel rooms on the Berlin Turnpike. There's 50 hotels and motels along the Berlin Turnpike. Some of them do hourly rates. And I understand that if uh, the intent is if we take that, that option away, it will make it too expensive or uh, take that option away for a, for a pimp to get a room for a girl and a, and a John. Uh, there's better ways to do that than, than risking the bill through that language. Um, there's more here, but uh, again, I think those, those were two of them. Uh, I really did want to mention uh, the fact that, I, I can't say strongly enough, uh, is increasing the penalties and, and creating a penalty for commercial sexual exploitation that occurs online. If, someone's, if a man's paying for sex in Connecticut online to have a 13-year-old girl perform sex acts, that should be illegal. Mm -hmm. And okay. Um, oh, go ahead. Okay. No, I'm, I'm, I think that's, uh, that's pretty much all I'll take your time for now. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Senator. A quick question. Um, did, did, I, did I hear you say you provide law enforcement training? Is that correct? Correct. Have you done any law enforcement training in Connecticut? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. My pleasure, Senator McCrory. Any further questions from the committee? Seeing none, th oh, Representative Gonzalez. Thank you. Uh, do you know if they, uh, if um, they traffic and any, any people with disabilities? Any people with disabilities? <sighs> what I have found is that there is really no, <sighs> it, it, human nature doesn't pay much attention to disabilities, ethnicity, age, economic status yes absolutely um, unfortunately it's been, especially those with uh, mental and uh, developmental disabilities they're they're very very easy to manipulate thank you yes ma'am any further questions to the committee see none thank you very much thank you, thank you for your patience